All right, hello, welcome back to the podcast. Once again, everybody, PayPal and Patreon are down there. If anybody wants to support me, you only do so if you actually can. Just taking a quick look at the likely upcoming clothing shortage. Now, this is not going to be an immediate thing, more of a near to medium future-ish thing, the effects of which will likely start taking hold over the next few years. And especially as we get towards the later half of the 2020s and then into the 2030s, will quickly get worse. To start with, most of our clothes are primarily the from either cotton, polyester, or in some cases wool. Polyester, of course, is a petrochemical. It is refined from petroleum. And the oncoming age of petroleum supply issues that we speak about rather frequently on the channel should be rather self-explanatory enough. But as for the others, particularly the bulk material that most clothes are made out of, cotton. Cotton, for anyone who's not aware, is a plant, so it has to be grown and harvested like many other things. And yes, it is, in fact, a very water-intensive crop. Also, afterwards, the whole cleaning and industrial processing effort of it itself is also a water-intensive process. And the bulk of the world's cotton is grown in the U.S., China, and India, all three of which, for different reasons, are going to be having issues with it, actually are already having issues with it to varying degrees. A lot of cotton in the U.S. is grown throughout the Southwest in desert areas and some in California, all areas of which are currently under drought and are going to be experiencing water shortages in the next few years. However, the majority of U.S. cotton is grown in particularly northern Texas around that area, which isn't the Southwest. However, interior, more western and northwestern areas of Texas have been constantly swept into droughts on and off over the last couple decades. Over in China, it's a similar arrangement as some bit of their cotton is grown in their mid-northern provinces. However, the majority of their cotton is grown over in Xinjiang, aka East Turkestan, which is, just like the U.S. Southwest, a desert. However, then we have to stack on China's water issues, as China's about the size of the U.S. However, China has way more people, way more stuff going on, way more water being used, way more than they could reasonably draw from just their rivers. So they have been relying for many decades on groundwater, and that has resulted in severe groundwater depletion. The worst hit portions being their north and northeast, as well as Xinjiang, India, where large amounts of the world's cotton are grown, and where, similar to China except worse, groundwater depletion is already reaching severe points and has begun causing a pickup in internal migration. And on top of just the groundwater depletion itself, India is also, along with Pakistan, in the middle of a massive drought. Pakistan doesn't grow a huge amount of the world's cotton, but they do grow some of it and they are in a shared drought with India. And the portions of Pakistan that are not in a crippling drought have been getting catastrophic flooding that has just been washing all of the crops away instead. But anyways, India is under a massive drought and multiple times just this year has been thrown into literally crop killing heat waves with many regions of India reaching and staying for multiple days at temperatures in excess of 50 degrees Celsius or 120 degrees Fahrenheit. As this cycle continues, the effects will inevitably stack. And then on top of just that, as you have this quickly growing situation of reduced viable crop areas, you're going to see countries making the choice to keep that area specifically for their own food production. And on the final bit of the material supply angle at least, the one other of the three things I mentioned being wool, Switching over to wool wouldn't really be a viable supply alternative because wool comes from sheep and sheep are animals and they have to be raised and they have to be fed and that, you know, it takes a lot of land to grow their food and that itself takes up a bunch of water. So replacing cotton with wool would actually be even more water intensive. Now on the actual production of the clothing itself, clothing and apparel production worldwide is concentrated in a few specific countries in two concentrated spots, one being just south of Mexico and Central America, in Guatemala, El Salvador, and Honduras, and the other over in Asia, in India, Bangladesh, Vietnam, and China. And while the actual manufacturing and production 
in the Central American group should be safe for the most part. It's over in Asia where the problems are likely going to arise. Vietnam should be fine for the most part. However, India, Bangladesh, and China are going to inevitably be an issue. China, regardless of any insistences to the contrary, is starting to buckle a bit. And as with many things, a lot sooner than I thought it was going to happen. I, I didn't think they were going to start cracking until after going for Taiwan and failing. However, it looks like citizen discontent inside of China, China internally is starting to not be able to maintain the totalitarian stability image that they previously were. So China, to likely the surprise of many, is actually going to end up becoming a supply risk, and not just because of that, but while the CCP does still have everything under their control, Xi Jinping has made it clear that they are sticking with the mega giga ultra super covid home imprisonment lockdown system which means any city any region and thus whatever is made in it could just instantly be taken offline for months at a time on a whim and on top of that they have started facing consistent off and on grid failure issues literally starting to drift into south africa territory of constantly not being able to supply enough power to the entire country the same kind of power issue of which has also started to take hold in Bangladesh, along with the fact that Bangladesh is inevitably going to sink under the sea, and along the way to doing so, it is constantly being deluged and flooded. In fact, in its most recent deluge episode, almost one of its entire states was completely inundated, and so with things like that now coming off and on, threatening to damage and shut down fabric factories of all kinds, and then over in India, their grid is okay, except during the heat waves, uh, then it starts to fail. But they are, however, also going to be struck again by the water issue. As I said, not just growing the cotton, the actual washing and processing of the cotton then also kind of requires a lot of water, along with the dyeing of it for different colors. And so the worse the water situation gets in India, the more they're going to have to pick and choose what industries get what water and what amount of water and when. And so all of this is going to be gradually stacking further and further upon itself as we keep rolling over the next several years into the future. And while it's not going to result in literal empty shelves in the clothing departments of stores, it is going to gradually result in less on the shelves of clothing departments and stores and particularly if the industry at least makes smart decisions as things go forward, less tremendous amounts of clothing variety. But for us, humanity as a whole, our track record with decision making isn't exactly the best. But anyways, that's it for this one, so thank you for sticking around and listening. Like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you haven't already. I have tons of other stuff about all kinds of current and upcoming issues you can watch. PayPal and Patreon are down there if you want to support me, only do so if you actually can. Go subscribe to my cat's channel for way less depressing content and help us get her up to a thousand subs before the deadline in November. But no matter what happens to me, may God bless and protect all of you, and I will see you all around next time.